how we deal with stress does make a difference. One of our favorite lines from the movie Forrest Gump is, life's like a box of chocolates. Although perhaps life is more like a box full of tools, each tool having a purpose. But when one doesn't know how to use them, or we use them improperly, some tools can certainly hurt us. Stress is a tool that appears to be in the way all the time. And stress is also necessary as a part of life and as a part of living. We need certain kinds of stress to drive us to do better, to perform well, to improve ourselves, and to excel when it's needed. Nowadays, we just have too much of it. We encounter stress at home, at work, on the streets, and everywhere in between. Coping with stress is supposed to be an occasional event. In a distant past, stressful situations would arise whenever there was danger nearby, like a tiger passing through something we needed to deal with immediately and wisely. Our lives used to depend on quick solutions to stressful situations. Thankfully, now, we don't need to deal with bears and lions on a daily basis anymore. Instead, we deal with traffic lights, deadlines, full schedules, and family issues. We have financial responsibilities, health concerns, and annoying peers. Endless moments of stress that seem to be everywhere we are and everywhere we go. How did it get to be this way? Experiencing stress every now and then is okay. Constant stress is not. When dealing with stress, it is important to remember that worrying about stress only leads to a more stressful life. When we spend our time and energy worrying about stressful situations, out of a possible 100% of the time we're awake, we spend 30% of the time worrying about things in the past, things that already happened and we can't do anything about. Another 40% of the time, we worry about things that just never happen. Then there is 12% that is of someone else's affair and has very little to do with us, and some 10% that is related to imagined illnesses we think we have, but in reality, we do not. That leaves us with only a remaining 8% that is really under our control. When you stop to think about these figures, you might come to the realization that worrying about stress is really not beneficial to us all. And in the event that we did worry this much, if we were to just focus on the 12% we can do something about, life would automatically be much easier to handle. When we deal with recurrent stress, we can deal with it in two different ways. First, we can confront it, exposing ourselves to the very thing that is causing us stress and strive to find a solution to the situation. Second, we can do nothing about it and just let it be. But that is not the right option. We'll explain it in a minute. When we confront stress, we work on improving our circumstances by finding the resources needed and those available in order to remedy a particular situation. Whenever stress levels are too high, we may lose control of ourselves, and this may give rise to several undesirable emotions. These are moments that we need to avoid and prepare for by not letting them rise to a boiling point. Deciding what annoys us and what we consider as dissatisfying experiences is the first step to take to liberate the negative emotions that we associate with such stressful moments. An example of this would be the presence of certain people in our lives that negatively impact our beings whenever they are around. A possible solution to this scenario is we can rearrange our priorities as to whom we let into our lives. And in this manner, the decisions we make in advance or as of now will automatically lead us to a less stressful life. All emotions are energies in motion. When our energy is not in the same plane as where it needs to be for us to stay calm, the navigational capability of our subconscious is compromised. Every emotion has a purpose. What we need to understand is that emotions are not the same as feelings. There are over 30,000 emotions listed in the English language. And when a negative emotion, like frustration, is brought on by stress, we need to be aware not to give it power so it won't act on our feelings like becoming angry, for that's when we cross the threshold from being in control of ourselves to letting the outside world be in control of us. 
Letting certain emotions take over the way we feel may result in some undesirable outcomes. In a universe of emotions, knowing where we are and where we would like to be is essential for us taking control of most of our situations. Once we discover where we're emotionally located in our universe, we can start navigating towards our desired place of emotional destination and decrease our levels of stress in the process. Thus, acting in a proactive manner rather than in a reactive one, we can then calmly seek for our best course of action, which most likely leads to a more desirable outcome to our circumstances. At times, distractions have a tendency to intervene with our understanding of the real reasons for reacting a certain way. We might only focus on the stress itself instead of looking for the hidden to why we're so stressed. Life will often try to push us around, bring us to our knees, and keep us there if we let it. It is our job to not let it push us around too far or for too long and seek solutions to our real problems as soon as we can. There will be a kind of sudden and unknown stresses that will require a certain kind of attention. Moments like when a guy behind us is honking for no reason, waking up in pain, an accident on the highway on our way to a meeting, losing our wallets or our cell phones. Then there are those inconveniences that cause us stress every day. Daily stresses like relentless barking dog next door, the light that just won't turn on, and the shower head that doesn't work well anymore. It is best to deal with them accordingly. Sometimes, in order to not confront some stressful personal ties or personal issues, we make ourselves busy. We spend hours exercising, we go out shopping, watch movies, plan getaway weekends, and even increase our workloads just to stay busy. Putting a blanket over whatever it is that is causing us most of our stress. But guess what happens when we deal with stress this way? Once our vacations are over, we finish our workouts, we come home from the malls or there are no more interesting movies to watch. The people, our issues, or the things that were stressing us out, they are still there. So this approach doesn't work. We don't get rid of stress by trying to get rid of stress, especially the kind we imposed upon ourselves. The kind where we spend our days worrying, fixated on what will occur next and all its boundless possibilities. Imagining specifics, but with no supporting evidence for such conclusions. This is usually the kind of emotional stress that is brought on by having unrealistic expectations that often lead to disappointments. When our ideas do not match our current reality, it creates stress for us in a conscious and unconscious manner. When our reality of how we believe things should be for us isn't matching our expectations, this disconnection itself ends up decreasing our levels of peace and happiness in our lives. Believing that other people are the cause of our stress or our unhappiness is not the right approach. What we perceive and what others actually perceive of us, experiencing from their interactions with us, can be something that is worlds apart. Pausing to think and begin working on understanding why we are not happy and why we're so full of stress starts the solution process. Becoming more aware and more in tune with our emotions and our feelings slows down the process of blaming others and we let ourselves get to know ourselves better something we all need to accomplish in our daily lives. While contemplating our emotions, we may find that our happy moments often come about when we stumbled upon unexpected occasions. Occasions where we were fully entertained because we were truly surprised, or perhaps what we had expected of that day, of that encounter, of that movie or that place, turned out to be way different than what we had anticipated or imagined. When we enjoy these happy moments, the hormone dopamine is released through our bodies, and this hormone is in charge of us being able to focus and feel better. It is in charge of increasing our sensations of pleasure, passion, and of naturally reducing our stress. In men, accomplishments, acknowledgments, new things, new experiences, and new encounters stimulate its release. 
The presence of dopamine in a man's system also increases the production of testosterone. Testosterone also helps men to lower the presence of another hormone called estrogen. Estrogen does the opposite of what testosterone does, and when estrogen is found in considerable amounts in a man's body, it can lead him into a depressed state or to suffer from anxiety. In women, the hormone that has a similar effect as testosterone is oxytocin. This hormone improves a woman's mood and decreases her levels of stress and anxiety by lowering the levels of cortisone present in the body. Cortisone is known for being the stress hormone found in moments of fear and anger, and cortisone is too commonly present in our bodies nowadays. The way oxytocin is substantially released in women is by having frequent positive human interactions. Therefore, relatively constant positive interactions with people is essential for women to reduce and cope better with their stress. Yes, men and women do deal with things differently. We recommend the book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, for this subject, and you can get it for free when you subscribe to Audible today. We will leave you a link below. Whenever we're under stress due to different situations, circumstances, or events, if we can act calmly, keeping our emotions in check, we can then choose from a range of known options, and the ones we end up choosing would likely be the ones with the best outcome. When we come face to face with a stressful situation, let's ask ourselves, what would I be focusing about if I were not thinking about what's stressing me out right this instant? This simple question will bring awareness to our moment, letting us choose what's more positively available for us than if we didn't do this process. Think of it this way. In this ocean we call life, we are the captains of our ship and our emotions are the crew. If we are not in charge of our ship, then our emotions are, or someone else's. The strategy is to properly sail our ships and not retreat it to full safety every time there is any trouble in our lives. Our job is to let our ship voyage as it was meant to do, thoughtfully and skillfully, dealing with all the challenges we encounter along the way. Let's treat ourselves with love, reconfigure any negative emotions being felt due to stress, substitute inattentive or disapproving behaviors with self-reassurance and peaceful feelings. Choose not to feel stressed about being stressed. Whenever stress arises, remember to ask, is this feeling appropriate or inappropriate? Is it helpful or not to me right now? The world is uncertain the uncertainty of life is part of what help us become more resilient at dealing better with our challenges. Let us also remember that life's uncertainty is also a part of what makes life worth living. We hope you have enjoyed our content. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and continue enjoying content like this one here. Let us know which part of the video you enjoyed the most and share your comments with our community in the section below. We will see you again on our next video. Thank you from all of us here at Trends for All Seasons.